Hi everyone, I'm back. Um, I have another question and answer uh, video because I've had quite a few people asking questions. So I'm going to go through that first, then I'm going to come back and we've got um, one of these to do. I'm going to show you how to do this, plus put some greenery on it as well. And that'll be the next video. So let's get going. <laughs> Natalie Aurora. She says, what are your favourite art and craft materials? Lace. Lace and um, appliques, things like that. I like to play around with bits and bats. Um, I've got on the channel uh, a lot of videos where I call them scrap flowers. So if you type in scrap on my channel in the search bar, you will see there will be quite a few come up. And I often, often do um, scrap flowers like, you know, these are just made with scraps, a couple of bits here and there. And they come out really nice. So, yeah, lace and um, appliques. That's on that side, but if I'm doing miniatures, then it's like um, anything. I like getting my hands dirty uh, and uh, mediums. I love playing around with mediums. So that was for Natalie Aurora. Uh, Wolfkeeper47, before I read your question out, do you actually keep wolves? Let me know on this video. Um, Wolfkeeper, I just think that's a fantastic name, but is it because you keep wolves? And I hope so, because if you do, send me a picture. I absolutely love them. I'd lo what I wanted for a project is just a, you know, from the base of the neck up of a wolf picture. Great, fantastic. What a project I can do with that. So, Wolfkeeper47 asks, um, uh, what do I do with all the flowers? I mentioned this in the video the other day. What I do with them, I'm, I can either auction them off, which I do auction some flowers off. The flowers I make in my videos as a tutorial, um, if the first time I've ever made them, then uh, sometimes you you have to... You know, you've got to get the video down to a certain size to load up. And so, um, if I've not been perfect with making the flower, but I've done a really nice flower, then that one will be uh, gifted out. Somebody can always use it. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that some take more time than other, if you know what I mean. It's really hard to explain, I think. But yeah, I sell them. I gift them. And I auction them. So, And, and that's everything I make. I do that with all, all the things I'm, I do. Pauline Fletcher, does your mind ever go blank and how do you get past it? Yes. <laughs> Not very often, because like I say, I often wake up during the night and have to write something down. But yeah, when I do have a blank mind, mainly if I've got a lot on my mind, a lot of other things besides crafting, like family issues, whatever, then yes, I can sometimes get... Um, crafter's block and so easy thing to um stop that is i will go into all the rooms in the house and look at something and say whether it be an ornament a candlestick um a, a vase and i'll think what can i do with that to change it and that's how i get across that block and if you do that and i've mentioned it before in my videos you need to go on into a room whether it be a bathroom or something and just say like I mean it look at toilet roll holders um I, have you, oh, I don't know if I can reach it let me see if I can reach it down without disturbing the camera like see I make things like this I can just use a toilet roll holder uh, put a little box together or use a little box a spare box I never waste anything I say I have a box full of or several boxes full of um you know empty cartons empty boxes empty tubs even chewing gum boxes and i will make something from them like i'll talk about this shortly because somebody's asked a question about it but even this tub if i have spare ones i can cut them at whatever length and the plastic so they're not going to rot i decorate them and i put them in something like that a desk tidier you know cover them with paper or paint them or whatever and it, you don't have to put it in the ground, you know, in the bin and then it goes in the ground. You can recycle. And I do a lot of that. Um, I'm, this isn't a question, but shab, Shabby Dabba Doodah 
uh, asked if I'd passed away. She thought, actually, she made a comment um, on the video about Julie and thought it was me. First of all, I'm still here, <laughs> so don't ever feel bad about it. You weren't the only one that thought it was me. And second of all is, I just thought her comment in thinking it was me was wonderful. It was lovely. And she could have said something bad about me. <laughs> she didn't. It was very nice, very kind and very thoughtful. So I do appreciate it, but hey, everyone, I'm still here. <laughs> Um, Mark, I think this is Mark side bottom. What glues do I use? Right, we'll get to that. I use two types of glue mainly, apart from the um, glue that goes in the glue gun. The milky sticks I like and I prefer rather than the clear ones. These are much stronger glue when they're, and it's for hot glue guns. And then, um, I, I don't ever use a lot of it. I only use a bit and it really is strong. You've probably seen me trying to get things off, you know, something I've put a, 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 a bling bit on and I can't get the damn thing off, but it's really strong. The milky ones are. This Pin Flare book binding glue um, is quite thick PVA glue. And I have to tell you, most PVAs, are, it's all white, isn't it? And they're all the same. They're just different strengths. But it's what you do with it and how to use it. So the Pinfair book binding glue, I mainly use that for fabrics because it's a really good stiff, uh, you know, strong holder for fabrics. The tacky glue, and this is the one I mainly use. I know people uh, prefer um, Almas or, or something like that, but I like this one for cards. You know, if I'm working with card, and only because one of those makes two of these. And what I do is I have a spare tub and I sometimes we sell them. So I sell them in that size normally. But um, I tip half of this out. I add water to both bottles, give it a good shake and add two for the price of one. And that is thick enough, or should I say it's thin enough and the right consistency to hold your card and paper without any bubbles. If I used it as thick as this is, it's you can get bubbles in it once it softened the paper but if you've watered it down by half and mixed it with you know give it a good shake it actually once you've used uh, something you know like you can use your lighter or something to smooth it out it doesn't put bubbles in it you don't get air in it and it lays flat and it will stay permanently so that's the glue i use there mark and and the book binding one uh sarah Whitten. When did you learn to knit and crochet? Well, um, because there were six girls, two boys, we all learnt to knit. Uh, our parents just taught us how to knit. Um, so, probably from the age of five upwards, I was either knitting or crocheting, or sewing. Um, yeah. I remember doing... And now, what was I? When I was crocheting was probably at six, seven years old. And I used to make things like blankets for my doll's bed. <laughs> and then when I was in my teens, I used to start making the jackets that you could wear and uh, design my own things that I'd edge it all in frills with, a, you know, a crocheted frill and that. And it was, nobody else had one but me and I used to think it were ace. So yeah, so from the age of five onwards. Gail Monmouth. Have you ever disliked something that you've created? Yes, um, quite often. <laughs> um, I was once called a narcissist. Well, a narcissist blows a trumpet and that I don't. I do say that I can do this, that and the other, but that's not blowing my trumpet. That's telling the truth. And you can't really call somebody a narcissist for saying that. Um, I'm not going to lie. If I can do something, I'm not going to say I can't do it, am I? That's silly. But I, <laughs> yeah, I do sometimes dislike what I do. And then somebody will come along and say, there's nothing wrong with it, Faye, it's fine. But it's, I have to have things done a certain way. Sometimes I can be very particular about how to do something. Um, I don't slap things together. I'm just not that sort of person. So, yes, I do sometimes dislike my own. Sandy Mossbrook, um, I've forgotten to write your question down, so I'll do that one in the next one. Sorry, I've just put your name down and not written your question. Annie, 
Um, and it's just Danny. Um, I've heard you say that you don't like doing snow or winter projects. Why? Because they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> I find winter projects, if it's a scene, like I once did a scene, you'll be able to see I've got some snow pictures, put snow in on my channel. And I did a scene and it were, because it's everything is white, it's boring to me. So apart from, you know, I'd have to put a lot of things in the project that's not white that you know but it's really hard so I don't really like doing winter scenes I'm, I'm a bit I just find them boring I really do sorry but that's me I just it's there's not enough in them for me to do that's all Judy McMurtry how did Ray and I meet uh, right I was a friend of Ray's daughter and I she had a shop and I worked for her and then I became friends with the family for many years. And then um, when my uh, Ray's first wife got ill, I, being a family friend, I helped and I used to go up and wash her hair, do her nails, do that sort of thing. And I know it's kind of like a personal thing, but it's life and it happened. So I'm going to mention it. Somebody's asked me. But after when she passed, and it was months after, um, Ray and I kept in touch and it grew from then and we became friends, firm friends. And so we ended up together and you can't choose who you're going to fall for. Um, and I've known people start a relationship who's known one of the partners in a lot less time than we did. But um, we started courting six months after and we married six months after that. So, and we've been married 33 years. And that's it. That's all I can say on it. That's how it was. That's how it happened. And we've had 33 years so far. Despite some people who said it'll never work. <laughs> Alison, oh, she has another question. Uh, does Judy McMurtry? She says, will you get another day uh, dog for Lucky and Joey? No. N no. I've too much with them two, the big dogs. One of them's huge. Um, but I'm going to film them shortly. I'm going to let people see them because they've not seen them for a while. And they do have their own channel, which you'll find linked to this on my homepage. And I haven't put anything up there for ages. But if you want to see my dogs, they are sheep dogs. They're um, collie dogs. If you've not already seen them, they're very funny to watch. We've got uh, footage of them in the pool swimming and playing about with a ball. We've got um, tricks that they do when they were puppies. They don't really do much now. But they I, at the moment, I've got a game that I play with Joey on a night when he comes upstairs. When I'm sat, if I sit on the, my chair, he sits on the bed and I've put a blanket on for him and he sits up there and he likes peekaboo. <laughs> I have to turn the corner of the blanket that I put on the bed for him over his face. And then I go, where is he? And he, he comes out the blanket you know, right sharp. Um, and that's his game. And he plays that for five minutes, gets off the bed and goes back down to his dad. <laughs> but it's funny. So, yeah, they do do tricks. I'll have to film him doing that, though, because he's funny. I don't know I will not be getting another dog too much with them. Alison Briggs, do you use your... Hello? Drink. Oh, just leave it on the steps. I'm just filming. Thank you, um, Alison Briggs. Do you use your own products from your shop? Yes. I do craft with... Now, everything you see me craft with is we've probably got in the shop. If we if it's sold out, you'll have to tell me. If it say it shows sold out, just drop me a line and let me know because I don't always... If I've got 20 of something, I'll only put 10 up. Because I... I always want to make sure if I run out, I've got some in stock ready for the next lot coming in. So, yeah. And I do use everything in my shop. But I buy from my shop to enable me to use. Because am I right? Some people find it weird or funny that I buy from my own shop. But I'm a stickler for everything being open and above board. And so I have to prove where I'm getting my equipment from. And I don't want my accountant to <laughs> say, you shouldn't be talking room shop and all that. I don't know whether they do or not. 
I don't know whether I'm able to. I don't know. I do buy from the shop and I do use what I buy. James Mackey, will you be doing more miniatures? Yes, definitely. I've got a few things um, in works, in the, in the head. And one of them is a thing I've wanted to do for about 10 years. And that is an apothecary shop. Just like a room. So I'm going to be, I'm collecting things for that at the moment. I'm almost uh, got everything I need. So yes, I will definitely, James. Florence Stance, have you ever worked with embossing powders? Yes. Uh, if you go, if you type in embossing powders, you'll find loads um, of videos that I've used and done lots of different projects with it. I, I show you how to stamp with emb uh, in embossing powder, um, how to uh, change the colour of embossing powder. Uh, if you're using a clear one, you can colour it. I show all them kinds of videos. Yes, I do use them. And I actually need to get them out because they've not been seen the light of day for a very long time. What I'm going to do though is I do have colours I never use, never will. So as we're doing the room, I'm going to be uh, going through all of the things I've got. I have a box and what I don't want, I put in the box. And eventually it'll go up for sale. Like the embossing powders, I may have took a little tiny spoonful out. Or a sprinkle. And so there's a whole tub of it. So it'll be sold second hand, uh, but there's no point in me keeping what I'm not going to use. So look out for those bargains. Timothy Stone, you once did a video sharing your father's paintings. Do you paint old masters like him? No. <laughs> I did once do a master that he'd done. It was just a bloke with a hand. It's a famous painting. The hand wasn't quite finished in the original. And so my father painted it and then I tried it after him. Uh, and it, it looked quite good. I was quite pleased with it. But, no, my father was an expert in painting masters. And you sometimes couldn't tell the difference between the two. But if I've got a video out on the channel of my father's paintings, of the old masters. So if you want to go and have a look, um, just put in paintings or old masters and it should come up. If you can't find it, drop me a line and I'll find it and give you the link. But he's a superb, he was a superb, he's no longer with us. He was a superb um, old masters. Um, I think that's it. Is it? That's it. Yeah, that's it. So that's another batch of them. Keep the questions coming in. AI will answer any question you like. Keep it clean. So I won't answer anything if it's not. Um, it can be on me, my life, you know, um, my crafts, whatever you want to ask, ask away. Thanks for watching, take care. Come back shortly. I will be coming back shortly, should I say, with a nice new video. Thanks for watching, take care. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye bye for now.